Hi everyone, thanks for listening to my presentations. Today I'm talking about pathologic jaundice, particularly in neonates. But I would advise that before listening to this, maybe you can pause and go back to listening to neonatal jaundice or neonatal upper bilirubinemia. So you'll be able to get the exact picture. Or you listen to this now because you don't want to switch you know, between topics then get the background fully later on. Pathologic jaundice will occur in less than 24 hours of life. So if a mother is presenting the newborn at the clinic and the hours after birth is less than 24 hours, maybe I should repeat, that neonates are those you know, kids delivered from the first hour of life to the first 28 days of life. So the mom is presenting with a child that is having jaundice in less than 24 hours after birth. That is pointing to pathologic jaundice. So in that case, the hours after birth will dictate, will give the first clue. Then, what are those conditions now, under which we could find this? Might be dealing with the molluses here, particularly if it is rhesus or ABO incompatibility. Uh, whether the mother is rhesus negative, we need to find out. Whether the mother is O and the baby is either A, B, or AB. And are we dealing with sepsis here? We need to find out. When we are suspecting sepsis, after ruling out, you know, mother's blood, father's blood, baby's blood, then what are we dealing with? Any hepatitis B, syphilis, herpes, zoster, rubella, cytomegalovirus, and of course, every simplex. We need to find out. The Bilirubin, when we ask the bilirubin, if it's not conjugated, then we are definitely going to be dealing with either physiologic or pathologic, right? Um, it could be hemolytic unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. In that case, we may be dealing with splenomegaly. Okay? Because when the screen is large, uh, it's going to move a lot of red blood cells and they become fragmented. Could be infection like rubella, cytomegalovirus, herpes, toxoplasmosis. Could be ABO incompatibility, resource incompatibility. GCSPD deficiency, you can check my channel for that. Hereditary spherocytosis or hereditary elliptocytosis. If it is non-hemolytic, unconjugated apabilirubinemia, we might be dealing with breast milk jaundice. You can check my channel for that. I have published breastfeeding and jaundice, and there I've explained in details breast milk jaundice and breastfeeding jaundice. If you go through so many literatures, about 100 literature, talking about neonatal jaundice and breast milk jaundice, 80% will tell you there's a substance in the breast milk causing the jaundice. But if you check my channel, you are going to find the name of the substance and why it is causing the jaundice. It could be cephalohematoma when the woman couldn't deliver the baby completely and she had to be assisted with forceps or polycythemia because the newborns will have high level of red blood cells or sepsis like touch. Kiba syndrome, Krigler and Naja 1 and 2, and hypothyroidism. The investigations that could be done will include complete blood count to know whether we are dealing with polycythemia or we are dealing with infection when you have your differentials, where blood cell differential count, or we are dealing 
well, by the time you do your total bilirubane and direct bilirubane, you'll be able to estimate the indirect bilirubane. So you know you are dealing with unconjugated bilirubin and at what level, because that will determine the intervention you are going to give later on, right? And of course, blood group A, B, O, and resource. Want to know whether the incompatibility there is the source of the problem. And when you are suspecting sepsis, you have to do septic workup. So get urine for culture, blood for culture, lumbar puncture, and get the CSF for culture. Coom test and chest x-ray, you know, are welcome to help in arriving at the diagnosis. Okay. When it comes to the treatment, first thing to do is education. We have to tell the mom or the caregiver what the diagnosis is. And we need to explain if it is benign or not. We need to tell them if it is hereditary or not, so as to save you know, the future you know, pregnancies and the infants that will come later on. We have to encourage breastfeeding that impacts pathologic cases like we are dealing with right now. We have to treat the cause. For example, if it is infection, you give appropriate uh, medication. If it is bacteria, we give appropriate antibacteria. If it is viral, you know, supportive. And of course, we still need to encourage breastfeeding. In unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia, any value at 300 micromole per liter or 20 milligram per DL, please use phototherapy so as to convert the insoluble bilirubin to soluble bilirubin. But if the bilirubin level is 400 micromole per liter or greater, or 30 milligram per DL, then we need to use a change blood transfusion. But in most cases, observation alone will be appropriate. With that, I've come to the end of this very presentation. Kindly check my channel for Canicteros and neonatal hyperbilirubinemia and breastfeeding and jaundice. And remember to share and subscribe. I appreciate it. Thank you.